Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming with a pretty simple and straightforward recipe for roti. If you're struggling with your roti and you want to learn a few new tricks on how to make easy roti, this is the video for you. I recently taught my seven year old how to make roti using these ingredients and these steps and he made perfect roti and so I figured if he can do it, you can do it too. First you want to start by adding three cups of all purpose flour to a mixing bowl. A large side mixing bowl would be good for this type of recipe. Then you're going to add one teaspoon of baking powder and a very non-traditional ingredient, a quarter teaspoon of rapid rising yeast. Now traditionally we don't add yeast to roti so don't tell my mom she would never go for this but add some yeast to your roti dough and it'll be perfect every time. Mix that together using a whisk and then add one and a quarter cup of water to that flour mixture. Now here's a little trick. I taught my son how to use a rubber spatula to mix the dough together. So no pressing and pulling with your hands, no figuring out how to get it all together. Just use your rubber spatula and mix it around and mix it together and you'll have a perfect dough every time. Once you get all of that flour mixed in together, next you wanna go ahead and just Turn this dough onto a floured surface and continue to mix uh, gently until it's nice and smooth. Now you don't have to do too much mixing here. You just want to do enough mixing to make sure it's not a sticky dough, but it still is going to be soft. So I added a little bit of flour to the board, as you can see. Then I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of flour on top. And then I'm just pressing it gently with my fingers. So it's not the kind of kneading that you would need to do if you just had baking powder in this dough. There's no big manipulation needed. There's no big kneading. It's really just to make sure it's not so sticky that when I put it back in the bowl to let it rise a little it's not sticking to the bowl and I can't get it out so once I feel like it's not as sticky and it's pretty good I'm going to go ahead and put it back into that mixing bowl I'm going to cover it with a kitchen towel and I'm going to let it sit for 20 to 30 minutes so it could rise a little remember we put some rapid rising yeast in there so you want that yeast to get activated and you want it to rise a little so I'm just going to go ahead put it in the bowl, cover it with a kitchen towel, and set it aside for 20 to 30 minutes, and then it'll be the most perfect dough and be ready to go. So 20 minutes later, um, it's ready, it's soft, and now I'm gonna go ahead and separate it into five roti pieces. So you wanna clean any residue or any hard pieces of dough that's left on your roti board, add some more flour to that, turn this dough onto the roti board, and um, I'm gonna pull it out so it's elongated so it's easier for me to average um, the five pieces. And then um, usually I like to just kind of mark it a little with the knife where I'm gonna cut it so I can eyeball it and make sure I have five even pieces. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. You can tell the size of the pieces just by you know holding the dough in your hand and feeling the weight of the dough or the fullness of the dough and you'll know like if the pieces are even or not. If you have a kitchen scale, even better, weigh the whole dough, divide it by five, and then cut it into five pieces. Um, that's the OCD part of me and I have done that before, but but it's not necessary. Um, once you have your five pieces, go ahead and move that to a plate. I'm gonna move it to a plate and then I'm gonna clean my roti board off so it doesn't have any dough that's gonna make my roti stick to the board. Um, so with a clean board, I'm ready to oil off my roti and I'm gonna take one piece of dough, cover it with flour. Remember, this is a really soft dough and I don't want it sticking to the board. I'm gonna cover my rolling pin um, with flour as well. And then I'm gonna roll that out into a flat, round disc, a uh, thin disc. The bigger you roll the roti at this stage, the more surface area you have for that fat to go on there and the flakier your roti is. Trust me, I've been making roti for a long time. Sometimes in a, I'm in a hurry and I just roll it out to be a small disc and it's not as flaky. So you wanna roll it out as big as you can and then you're gonna go ahead and brush it with room temperature butter. Now I'm using some vegan butter. I've recently, um, decided that roti wasn't something that needed to not be vegan. And so I add some vegan butter instead of using regular um, butter. 
Uh, but you can go ahead and use regular butter. You can use ghee if you want. You can use some oil at this step, but vegan butter at room temperature is really great here. Then you put a slit on the side, roll this into a cone, and you're gonna tuck the ends into that cone opening. So tuck, 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 then turn it over and tuck the pointy part all the way down into the center. Now, if that was a little confusing and you're like, uh, how, how do I do that again? Have no fear. There are other ways to oil off the roti and to tuck it in um, that don't require a science degree or any sort of engineering degree. <laughs> in fact, when I tried teaching my son that way, he was like struggling so much he couldn't figure it out. And he's also lefty and he's also seven. So I was like, you know what? Let me see how I can do this a little bit differently. And I remember seeing this next way of doing it on... Um, one of the blogs I follow, it's for an Indian woman um, who's living in India, who's having a gluten-free life, and I don't remember the name of the blog, but this is how she rolls her parathas. So roll it out again, add some butter on there, gluten-free vegan butter if you want, and then we're going to go ahead and just roll this up, kind of like if you're rolling a cinnamon. So roll it up, roll it up, roll it up. Isn't that so much easier now? And then we're just going to turn this into a little circle. By the way, this is my son's favorite way to do it. And I often let him come do the rolling when I'm making roti and he loves it. So, and there you have it. And it's nice and round and you want to just set that aside. One other way that you can do this, and I think I shared this in my previous roti video, which is six years old, by the way. Um, so definitely needing some updating. Um, my previous roti video, I showed you guys how to bake it into a square. And so again, you want to go ahead roll that dough out and I didn't speed up this part of the video because I really wanted you guys to see that this is not time consuming it doesn't take a lot of time and effort and because the dough is so soft from that little bit of yeast don't tell anyone um it's perfect and it rolls out perfectly and quickly so you go ahead brush it with the butter again and now we're going to fold it um in half and then in another half and then fold the two sides in to make a square so once you get it fully covered, every inch of it, nice and even, go ahead and fold the end all the way to the center, fold that over, then fold it, the two ends in, and now you have a square. And you are set. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to oil out the other two rotis uh, just to show you guys that I'm going to quickly finish this up. And then we're going to start cooking these rotis. Now, because we are using a little bit of yeast, typically when you're done oiling off your roti, you have to let it sit again for another 30 minutes before you can start cooking. But because we're using rapid rising yeast and because the dough is already soft and perfect, you can start to cook it as soon as you're finished oiling off all of your rotis and I promise you it will be nice and soft and flaky. I've used this recipe multiple times and every time I get the same result and it's perfect for large batch roti making. I find that making five rotis is pretty easy to mix the dough and get it smooth but if you have to make like 20 to 40 or even a hundred, I've made a hundred rotis before, it sometimes it's tricky and with this little ingredient because the dough is nice to work with, it's pliable, it rises quickly, it's really soft. All of the roti came out really good. So don't worry about it. Give this a try and tell me about it in the comments. Tell me how easy it was and um, how you were able to make roti just like my son can. So my preferred method of oiling out the roti, as you guys can see, is to make the funnel and to tuck it in. That's how my mom taught me. That's how I do it. But the other two ways are just as good and you don't need any special tricks or tips. You just do the one that works best for you and 
like anything else, it takes practice. And so if you keep doing it um, and keep trying it, you'll get it right. But a lot of people don't want to make roti because they feel like, you know, I can't get the dough right and it's not going to come out good. It's gonna, not going to be flaky. It's not going to be soft. It's going to be stiff. But I'm telling you that with this new recipe, your dough will come out right every time. I live in Denver. We're above sea level. Science tells me that I need to do something different when I make my roti. I don't do anything different except for this little trick and I get perfect roti every time. So once you have all five of your roti oiled off, you're going to go ahead and cover that, um, move it to a, a plate so you can have a good surface to roll out your roti when you're ready. And then I cover it with an, a kitchen towel again, not because I'm letting it rise again, but because my kitchen is very dry. In Denver, it's very dry and I don't want this roti to um, dry out while I'm waiting to make it. So, you know, I cover it and then when I'm ready to roll it out, um, I just remove the cover and I start to work with it. So I'm going to show you guys in real time, I'm not speeding up this video, how easy it is to roll out these rotis and cook them and clap them and have flaky, delicious, beautiful rotis. So I'm starting with the one that's the um, traditional cone-shaped roll-up that my mom taught me. So we're going to go ahead and do it that way first. We want to go ahead and add a lot of flour to the roti, flour your surface and flour your rolling pin so it's not sticking. Add some more flour if you need to. If you find that there are any sticky parts on your roti, just go ahead and add some more flour and continue to roll it out until it's a really thin disc. These rotis are going to roll out to be the perfect size for my um, flat skillet that I use to cook my roti on. Which, by the way, if you're interested in buying one similar to it, it's a large cast iron skillet. And on my blog, I now have a section link that's called Shop My Faves. So you can go ahead and click on that and see all the tools that I use um, if you're interested in having the same equipment that I'm using. So you want to roll out the roti. And then um, keep rolling until it's really nice and thin. You want to be careful to also roll the edges to ensure that those are also nice and thin. And then to move the roti, just put your palm flat on the roti and then pick it up that way and you can move it over to your hot skillet. So I have my skillet on medium heat and I go ahead and place my roti on there. I'm going to let it cook for a few seconds, about 30 seconds. And again, I left this video in real time so you can see that I'm not speeding it up and I'm not taking extra time to cook. So as soon as I start to see some bubbles on the top of that dough, I'm going to flip the roti over and then I'm going to oil it using... Um, some cooking oil and the type of oil that I'm using for this roti is sunflower oil but canola oil or vegetable oil even grapeseed oil or avocado oil is really good for this then go ahead and brush it and then we're gonna flip it and brush it again some people like roti with lots of brown bits I don't so for this first one I didn't let it have any brown bits my husband loves it with the brown parts, and so I'll show you guys for in the next roti, I actually let it cook a little bit longer and get some brown parts. Then it's going to start to swell up. You can see some air pockets are starting to form on the roti. If I had it, if I had the heat a little higher, there would be a lot more air pockets, and it will also get that little bit of brown bits that everybody likes. So I'm going to go ahead and just add... Um, some more oil after I flip it and I'll continue to brush it and I'll just wait for it to cook for a little bit so you can see again it's in real time so you guys can see how long it's taking for this to cook and then I'm gonna remove this roti move it to a bowl that I have lined with a kitchen towel and I'm gonna clap the roti So a little bit of brown is there. I think my roti is done. 
I'm pressing the edges of the roti to ensure that it's cooking and also to allow it to swell up a little bit more. Then I'm going to go ahead and move it over. And I solicited the help of my husband to come clap this roti because he's a better roti clapper than I am. And so he's, um, by the way, my husband's an excellent roti maker. So um, I solicited his help to come clap the roti. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to roll out and cook the square roti. I sped this part up because, quite honestly, you guys don't need to see that in real time again. But yeah, just... Um, even the, the square roti you can roll and manipulate so you can get a round shape. and Or you can just roll it out square like and nobody cares that it's a square roti. So just roll it out um, and then move it to the heat. Go ahead and follow the same process. Let it cook for about 30 seconds. Flip it. Oil. Let it cook for another 30 seconds. Flip it again. Oil it. And then... Um, clap it so flip it one time brush it with oil flip it again brush it with some more oil and then I'm gonna let this one get a little bit brown um, so my husband could be happy <laughs> and then I'm gonna move it to that same um, bowl that is um, covered with the kitchen towel and kitchen towels are really great for roti versus paper towel because they just keep the warmth and the moisture in and it helps it to not dry out and helps it to stay warm so that by the time you're done making all of your roti um, it's ready to be served now a lot of people looking at it doing like oh the roti didn't swell up but look it didn't need to be so inflated like a dal puri but it's still gonna be flaky now if you don't know how to clap roti but you have a bowl with a nice tight lid go ahead and put your roti in that bowl and just give it a good shake 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 and then you can open it and see that it's just as if it was clapped now this is not a new t trick it's not, i'm not owning this technique lots of people do it i've been doing it for five years and you can see that the roti still pretty flaky um, just like if you clap it so that's a good trick the trick though is to get a bowl with a lid that fits and is a tight lid now we're going to go ahead and roll out the one that um, rolled up the way my son loves, loves to do it same thing flour it if it's sticking to your rolling pin add some more flour add some flour to the rolling pin make sure that you get all the sticky parts and roll 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 until it's a really thin disc and ready to cook just like the other ones Roll, 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 roll. It's nice and thin. It's ready to cook. I moved it to the skillet that's really hot by now because I've been making roti. And then we're going to follow those same steps again. As soon as I see some air bubbles form, I go ahead and flip it. I add some oil, brush it with oil all over. Flip it again. Brush it with some more oil. Let it cook for a little bit. Let it swell up a little bit. And then I'm going to move it and I'm going to clap this one myself. And you guys will see how pathetic my clapping is. Um, so I can only clap one clap at a time. but And that's okay. It's efficient. It works. And um, I'm all done. And look, these are all five rotis. Look at how flaky they are. They're soft. They're delicious. They're perfect. So give this recipe a try and don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like.